Hey everybody, it's Rockula, and welcome back to Rockula Retrospective. It's day 24 of my Vita series, 30 Bands in 30 Days. Vita stands for Vlog Every Day in April, and today's band is Typo Negative. Me and my friends are eating at Saul's Taco Lounge in Deep Ellum, and I walk over to the jukebox. They've got that new Typo Negative album, Bloody Kisses, that I've been hearing about, so I played the first song. As soon as it came on, everybody that worked at the store groaned. The first song was Christian Woman, and by the time they got to the part with the birds and the running water in the background, I was beginning to wonder if this band was a joke. We all started to giggle, and I said, I gotta play another song. The staff let me know that they would not appreciate having to listen to any more typo negative. At that moment, I knew I had to buy this CD. This is another one of those never heard anything like this before moments. The sound was incredibly dense, and the lyrics were extremely melodramatic. I couldn't figure out if they were for real or not. This band had no shortage of low end. The bass player used distortion and played chords which thickened up the sound considerably. And then there were the vocals. I was also skeptical if this was a joke band because the vocals were so deep. I read in an interview with Peter Steele at the time and he confirmed that that was his actual voice. I found out that I had bought the second pressing of Bloody Kisses which has the women actually kissing on the cover. I had to go out and buy the first version because it had songs that didn't appear on my version. They were more abrasive and gave me a glimpse into their previous material. I can't even begin to pick a favorite track, but I have to say that their cover of Summer Breeze is one of the greatest cover songs of all time. There were two previous albums called Slow Deep and Hard and Origin of the Feces, which was live versions of the songs off the first album. I found out that this band might be joking, but they were no joke. I had never heard a live album recorded in front of a hostile audience before. The audience hated them and the show even got stopped for a bomb threat. It was then that I realized how confrontational this band could be. The early music didn't sound like the vampire love songs of Bloody Kisses. It sounded more like Leibach mixed with industrial metal. And they were shoving it down the throats of an audience that clearly did not appreciate Typo Negative. My admiration for this band grew exponentially. October Rust came out and the band continued with a more lush sound. Another component of Typo that I appreciate is the keyboards. Before the keyboards were for chord textures and the standard industrial samples of dialogue and construction machinery. But this album featured more keyboards. It extended the range and dynamics of the band. But this album featured more keyboards. They expanded the palette of textures that fit between the bass, guitars, and drums. If you listen with headphones, there's a lot going on underneath the songs. Typo definitely counts as headphone music. They came through Dallas for the October Rust tour and played Deep Ellum Live. I had friends at the venue and they let me work general jobs to get into shows for free. This time I was watching the back door and checking backstage passes. I was already a big fan, but I didn't want to ask them questions right away so I waited until they were settled in and got comfortable. I then asked the band about the live album and told them that I had a lot of respect for doing what they did. They laughed and told me that I was about to lose respect for them because they had recorded that whole thing in the studio and added themselves and their friends as audience members. It took a second for it to register because I started playing the album in my head, but once it sunk in, I told them that I respected them even more. I watched the entire show from behind the drum riser and it was one of the coolest moments of my life. I really liked World Coming Down and Life is Killing Me as the band progressed. The sound was getting more expansive and the lyrics were getting more personal. I rarely pay attention to lyrics and mostly prefer music where the vocals are a rhythmic instrument or completely absent. You can't avoid the hype surrounding Peter Steele and it can color your perception of him. It's easy to think of him as this giant vampire looking dude that says inappropriate things and gets all the goth chicks. It's easy to think that he's got it made, but these lyrics are not about partying with groupies and excess. These lyrics deal with intense feelings of self-hatred, depression, and anxiety. Peter Steele is telling us that he is nothing like that person that you have invented in your head. He is a highly flawed individual with emotional and mental health issues. But isn't that what usually seems to drive the creative process the most? It was four years between each album and I eagerly anticipated the new release. I was not disappointed with Dead Again. 
It was the perfect combination of early aggression with the expansive polish of the newly evolved typo sound. There is no more perfect typo negative song in my mind than Prophets of Doom. The whole album is amazing and I try to listen to it all the way through whenever I can. I have to thank Dave Chaos from KNON because he gave me tickets for pledging to his show when Typo came through Dallas. I had a great time, but little did I know that this would be the last Typo show I would ever get to see. Because on April 14th in 2010, Peter Steele died. No more Typo albums. And just when they had put out the best album they had ever made. I can count Typo as a musical influence as well as an artistic one. They branded themselves quickly and stuck to it until the end. Their art followed a very specific pattern and was meant to look calculated. But there are very few people that have influenced me lyrically. Not so much the way I write lyrics, but the way that I identify with the content. I had mentioned earlier in my Rush segment that subdivisions appealed directly to my adolescent angst. The adult in me appreciated the amount of access to a highly articulate person's inner struggle. It helped a little knowing that someone like Peter Steele was going through the same types of things that I was, and he wasn't shy or guarded about the extent or depth of his personal failings. After he died, I went back and watched interviews that he did just after Dead Again came out. He spoke of his jail time for assault, going to rehab for his cocaine and alcohol issues. But there's an underlying tone throughout the interviews and that is his wish to die. Most people who get past that stuff tend to come out with at least a temporary sense of hope. I can't speak for Peter Steele, but he just seemed to be tired of suffering and didn't think his life was capable of getting any better. I have avoided doing an album retrospective on Typo Negative because I am contemplating doing further reviews down the road. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Typo Negative in the comments below. I'd also appreciate if you liked, subscribed, and shared. Thanks for checking out my Vita series, 30 Bands in 30 Days. Tomorrow is day 25 and the band is another heavy hitter in the lineup, Victim's Family. I'm Rockula and this is Rockula Retrospective.